Start up. It's quite fuely. There's a bit of oiliness too. Carpet's already out. Right, let's go for a drive. Go. Down the race. Uh, you know, there's no back in it, Jase. There's nothing in the back. Check this shit out. Woo! Yeah, mate. There's some flash stuff going in the house. So, so this is a, a 185 surf. And 185 surfs. Um, and it's got a 1UZ in it, as you know. It's got a UCF20 non VVTI. And you can see there's, the man's got some plans. We've got an alternator light on. We have an alternator light. We probably should address that alternator light, eh? See what's going on there? It's on. It's on. Yep. Yes. And the, the plan, the plan with this one is to turn it into an off-road beast. So we're just part of the plan. But there's something that's a problem with this vehicle to make it an off-road beast as you discovered yesterday. Are you going to see me how to get stuck? Can you just, just come up this way? Just, just drop it into four-wheel drive, Jace. Beg your pardon? Someone installed the four-wheel drive, not. Just pop the lever, just just move that, just move that four-wheel drive lever. Yep. Yeah. This cup. The, the cup. cup. Yeah. That's that's possibly the problem. There is no four there is no four-wheel drive. <laughs> Wait, here's Teddy. There's a post there. So it turns out this thing gets stuck on a cow pack. Pretty much. Because there's there's no four-wheel drive at all. It's been removed. It's four-wheel drive delete. It's definitely got the four-wheel drive delete. Mm -hmm. So your job is to reinstall some four-wheel drive. Cool. And then it's actually off to someone else. Here is it. We'll go to a turn around and because if you back down there you'll get stuck again. Oh you there's a there is a there is a cow pat there. We're not moving. As I said, it gets stuck on a cow pat. It was cow pat. We're going out backwards, we're not going forwards. <laughs> you literally can't back out of there. Oh you really you really are stuck. Um now this being a 185 surf also, normally would have a a left hand, the transfer case, the drive shaft would normally be on my side. Would you like to go to this gate so you don't have to go through the tricky bit? Um, stuck or we're going up again? So it's, normally it's a, a left hand side uh, drive shaft. Yep. And this is getting safari diffs under it, which is the right hand. So the drive shaft's going to go down your side. So it's going to be weird for you, but you've got to get you just like doing the wiring in the wrong way. That, that it's not going to line up with the transfer case. Your drive shaft will not go to the transfer case anymore. And you aren't. Good enough. You aren't totally required to um, make it actually drive. If we've got a drive shaft then you make it drive, otherwise it will be towed onto the trailer and off to the man to do the diff work on it. Yeah, it appears that we got stuck. You got stuck pretty it's, bad. It's got an LSD in it though. It does have an LSD in it, Jase. Don't know how that's got road tires on this vehicle and too. And there are literally the cow patch you got stuck on. <laughs> There's, there literally were cow pats right, right there. 
That, that is the cow pat you got stuck on. And that one. You nailed, you nailed, you nailed them perfectly. Let us proceed to the workshop. We'll have a quick look under the bonnet and then you can get stuck in. So it's actually pretty tidy under here, eh? It was suited in 11. So it's been in here for a long time. What was it to start with? It's charging. You got 14 volts there. This was a 3RZ. So we got we got charge but we just got a battery light on. It's set well back in the engine bay. It's nice. It's not one of my wiring because it's got traction control motor still in there. Looks good though, eh? Alright. Add the transfer case to it. Make it the four-wheel drive. Has the front diff actually physically been removed? Oh, does it? Front diff okay, removed. Done. Front diff removed? Okay. Let's have a look underneath, we'll see what they've done. Gonna get the big safari diff anyway, so. Front diff replaced. Front diff replaced. It yeah. literally doesn't have a front front diff. Something missing. Interesting too, they've put a rear sump. Um, which fits really nicely. When you have a front diff. When you don't have a front diff. Yep, okay. Might be a problem. Um, oh. We've got. See, there's going to be a diff in here. So we've just got. They've left those CVs in us to hold the axles. I've uh, hold the bearings together. Yep. Mind you, I think he's going with long, big, long suspension, so it won't matter. It'll clear everything. But he's got a steering rack in it too. So I'm not sure how they how, how they plan to sort that. That's going to be it's going to be really interesting to see. Yeah. Right. Oh. Cut the exhaust off. Oh, just unbolt the exhaust. Unbolt the front section, eh? Yep. <clears throat> this is an interesting drive shaft hoop too. Yeah. So. I don't think that's going to work either. I think it's going to be easier for you to drop the box out myself. I think that's going to be a smarter option. We've got a speedo wire coming through the floor. That's what the wiring was through the factory four wheel drive hole, the lever hole. Sorry, mate, your exhaust is uh, not going to work. Yep. Transport light. Oh, damn. You should be able to just transport the lines and out of the way. Hopefully. They've, um, it's actually quite smart because they've used the Gen 2 box, but then they've added a Gen 1 tail shaft to it. To give the speed sensor, no. so that's its own circuit as the speed sensor, which is the, so that's got a Gen One, which is a bit of a pain for what you want to do because you've now got a, a drive on it. And you actually want the one without a drive, so 
I'm not sure I've got the correct one. I'll see what I can find for you, eh? But, so if guys are doing a... a vehicle that needs a separate speed sensor, using a UCF20 engine and box combo, then putting the Gen 1 tail shaft housing on with that separate speed sensor is the way to go. Allen keys for fucking draw troubles. Yeah, and they use Allen keys, yep. So it's cool. Have you ever wondered why the, the polarity of the front and rear speed sensors are different in the wiring diagrams? In the wiring? No. Did you even notice? No, because you don't do factory management very often. I reckon it's because when the box is working, this is spinning in a different way to that one. The drum, there's a big drum in here, mm -hmm. and I reckon it spins a different direction. What sort of drum? Snare? Snare drum, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, snare drum. I don't know the drum names, I'm not a drummer. So, this is coming off, slicing, drilling, throwing that away. Um, you don't like those bolts? They're not going back in this vehicle. It's going to have a totally different exactly. setup anyway. Yep. Uh, and were they, were they nice and tight? They were... Nice and tight? No, Could you undo... Did you actually need an Allen key tool to undo those bolts? No. Just about undo them by hand? Just about undo them by hand. Yeah, probably indicates they're not suitable. No. Um, so yeah, normal, just normal stuff. Throw that, take that off, drill a hole, set it up in the drill press nicely. We'll get a kit coming, you pick up a trans kit for it. Uh, I probably should wire the four-wheel drive engagement. Was the oil, what the oil look like? It's all right. Wasn't, wasn't disgusting and yucky. Yeah, and the line, Flocker, the line pressure cable is still in good order. It isn't all cracked to bits, which is nice. I wonder if he wants the long breathers on it, going four-wheel drive. Nah. We might run, run the big long hose for him. Because it's hard to do when it's in place. Awesome. I've got the plate off to do a rear main seal. But I actually think this is the oil leak right here. Along the back of the sump. Better ring the owner and see if he wants me to fix that. Can we do this one in place without too much difficulty? Yeah, we can actually. Jason will love that job. Guess what this one's getting? Guess what it's getting? I forgot. In the wiring department. Guess what it's getting? To make the auto work? And the engine work? Oh, you're putting it on the house here, isn't it? Yeah. Apparently. Oh, so hang on. So hang on. It's gone from, I'll just, just put the four drive onto it, so we have to now put it in what we want. Later on. So it's going to go down to Tom's Off-Road, who we've been dealing with with another job, down in Canterbury. So it's going into Canterbury. Yeah, and then it's getting, it's going, it's going to come back to get the Haltech done. Oh. So, fix the oil leak. Sump off. Just to make it fun, put the four-wheel drive in. I'll talk to Tom about gearbox cross members because Tom may want to just slice them right off and put a new member through it. And he's getting a new exhaust in it anyway, so that's not a problem. Okay. Um, yeah, I think mate, I mean, if it's getting some failure, it might end up with big arms. Correct, correct. So, so that might be in the way anyway. So we may end up just putting a temporary Put the, put the back under and put a block of wood or something under it. Yeah, put something in there so Tom can make it. So I'll talk to Tom about cross members and um, that should make it easy for us. Look, the cover's nice and clean. Jason's been in, new rear main seal, and he's chosen to put it in a new spot to where it came out. So he's pushed it in further. So this one came out, it was flush. And then we just pushed it in further so it sits in a new spot on the crank 
and is less likely to cause any problems sitting in the same groove. And of course that O-ring, yeah. right, which is... It's totally not there, how that happened. <laughs> yeah. Totally yeah. unplanned was this one, Jace? Yeah, I replaced it on the bed, and I tapped that, tap it, it was like, oh, I was going there now. Yep, good. Works for us. And the sump's been off, that's been cleaned, and all resealed. You go away. And of course he put it on his face. Um, I found the sleeves too. Your adventure in the Suzuki to get my to get the transfer case out of the trailer. Mm. Did you buy see what I bought? Yeah, more. Yeah. <laughs> right, so Jace is gonna be into this this afternoon. We've got a transfer case. No. Uh, we better, probably should take the farm vehicle out. Jace, we fixed this on the weekend. Well, we didn't because it's not going, but we pulled it apart. You need to watch my video on this. Gosh. You just talk to me. I'll talk to you. So the oil comes out of that hole, mm. and the surf, the shaft is hollow, and it's got like a frost plug in the end. If you would have seen a little plug in the end with the two little holes. So that allows it, the oil to come out of the, the surf one. Whereas this one doesn't have it. You can actually drill up there if you've really got keen, you can actually drill up it. Yeah, no. Yeah. So this one has got, see it's hollow in here, and it's got the missing um, spline. So that goes over there, and you want to push that up nice and hard onto there. Mm -hmm. And then we actually grub screw through, so you don't want to hit that. So you'll actually drill through this, and the grub screw will go right through, through the sleeve. The, grub, the scrub screw will go right through the sleeve and onto the shaft, so it holds, locks it really hard on the shaft. And then the oil needs to come through here. So, down the spline, into this cavity in here, so you can't butt them up close, because otherwise nowhere, so you need a, like a, probably a one and a half, two, three mil little gap in there, just a little gap in the middle, and that allows the oil then to to enter this sleeve, and again, there's that spline, there's that missing piece in there, same as on that side. That one has, it's only got the hole on one, to allow the oil to come out of there and into the, it goes through the bearing, and it actually dumps on that back side of the bearing. Oh, dumps into the dam, sorry, doesn't go through this one. The, the factory one it goes through, this one it doesn't, this one goes through, and it dumps into this dam, which lubricates this bearing. If you're at all worried about that bearing, I think I've got a new one. And if you're at all worried about that seal, yeah, we pull, we'll just put new ones in, eh? They actually look okay, though. And you're going to drill drill this out and put the Lexus um, speed sensor into it. I've got a 15 millimeter drill bit over there. So that, that allows the oil. Is that... Is that where it sits like that, or does it sit it's, out? It's, it's just so you can just, just so that holds like that. And that ensures that oils that back bearing properly. So the, I, this is why we swapped to this one, so it's got no, no gear on it, no drive. Mm -hmm. And so you just trim it back appropriately. Yeah, it won't fit, Jase, is it a lip? I know that. It's a bit like the end of your, your penis. Stop your hand falling off. Well, there's a knob on the end. And then we need to tap that hole, of course. Sixty-four mil from the other there. Oh yeah, cool. Sounds about right to me. So you measured your shaft on the other one, on the one you took it off. Yeah, and if we slip the torque converter out nicely, and then we'll stand it up in the drill press. And there's a service kit to put on the for the pan. Oh. Yeah, do a bit of inspecting the vehicle. Okay, if you want, yeah, just do it before you, everything's bolted up. Oh, I talked to Tom. So I, I had a chat with Tommy at Tom's off road. He said just tack a bit of angle line across it, a little bit of RHS, and just weld it in. He'll just sort it later. Just bolt one and just bolt the crossbeam back into it. Yep. So it sits on that. If that fits in and it sits on that, that's fine. 
just put it in there so everything works. Tom's doing um, Mike's surf, which I haven't, I've sold Mike lots of parts. So I just messaged him the other day to sort everything else out. So he's, because he's got, yeah, as you said, the arms coming back here. Yeah. He's probably gonna cut them off. So there's no point us making a nice cross member to fit onto that, is it? No, at all. You can do it. And drive shaft hoops. We'll just put a ratchet tie around down around the, the box so it doesn't flop around and drive shaft out until we can drive it out. Where are you for a shift though? Ah, uh, there's one in my, in my car. I just didn't leave it on the trailer, so we didn't lose it. So I do actually have a shifter. Did that box you got have a shifter? I've got to put the transit and put the transit case on. All right, cool. You see, so you're gonna drop the drop the box in. Um, in here. I'm considering I'm doing it by myself. It's probably easier that way. In here, so you've drilled that out. Get um a big. Get a sump plug washer. You want about um, because I think at the moment, oh, and you'll need to drill a hole. Yeah, no, I was going to do that. Um, I got a feeling at the moment if you turn the box, that the trigger wheel will actually hit this. I don't think it does. I've turned the box. Managed to do it without hitting. I'll put a washer on behind me. Just, just check that 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 doesn't get hit. But you've done a transfer case. And you got bolt holes in. Mm. You obviously managed to drill it okay. The adapter sleeves in there, just hold it all together. New bearing in it, that feels much better than the old one. The old one was a little bit grumbly. Yeah, very good. Okay, I'm gonna slam it back in. Well done. Ta da! So well, um, interesting here, you see the lots of clearance, because normally there's the drive shaft is here, to a front diff that's here, but this side of course there's the steering rack, and it's really, really close to the floor, so there's issues there. I don't know if that drive line angle's quite right. Um, and yeah, look at you, look at your mount. Well, like, okay, my instruction was, don't worry about it. That's what we get. Yep, make something work. That works. So we can give it to Tom. Yep. Pretty much. That works. Because yeah, Tom will probably end up putting something through because he's cutting stuff off it. So, um, I wonder if our drive shaft that doesn't reach. That doesn't reach. No. That too long. It's too short. It's too short. Yes. Like it's almost at the end of the spine. Like it's like this much hanging out, like this much spine still inside it. I thought that's probably not a good idea. So there's an to the floor. Yes. That was on the trailer. Yes. And so that's too. And the one and so the one out of this is too long. Yeah, it's like fucking this much too long. That one's like. Have, that have you got a? Have you got a V-block and a welder? I'm just, no. Nah. So that one, this is too short. Yeah, like it's almost, the spine's almost falling out. So we need one that's a little bit longer than that? Yeah. Okay, I'll go see what I can find. This one's too long. So J Jace will be extending this wire, because the speed sensor's on the other side. We'll go to some wiring for the, this fella. And we're not putting exhaust back on. Right, I'll go see if I can find a drive shaft for you. I'll get my measurements up. Look, he put a box, he put a transfer case in. Excellent. Measured your shaft. Measured my shaft. Mm. Measured the shaft. Yeah. It's um, probably not the cleanest, tidiest looking shaft. But for that particular vehicle, I need a shaft that's slightly shorter. This is why your shaft might be short. So
So, this is off that V6 down there. And the V6, we've moved the, trank, the, the whole box back. And so it's a little bit long. <coughs> by about. So I think that's going to do your job. They're going to rebuild it anyway. Once it gets down to time, it's getting rebuilt. So that'll get us on the trailer. Just check the splines are correct, the, the ends are right. That might get us sorted. And if we're doing that, we we probably should do something better here. Okay, well, let's see if this actually bolts to there. And possibly get a bit of steel, that like that. And a bit of steel on the other side. So it can't move, just stop it from flopping around. What's wrong with it like that? Well, the whole gearbox is going to flop around when we kind of drive it, Jace. It's going to flop around and put a piece of wood in there too. Yeah, but not as bad. Just so it doesn't move sideways. Just like something up here, just something to stop it from moving. So this was the bit of the gearbox shaft that Jace cut off. And the, the back bearing in here. So that's the back bearing in the, in the two-wheel drive housing. And then in the four-wheel drive housing, it got a new bearing as well. It's genuine Toyota. And of course, a service kit. It wasn't this one. This is the one that was the wrong one. But we've got a service kit. Yep, there's oil in it. You can just see it on there. It's so clean. Line pressure cable was fitted. And there's actually this one here. That's the breather line for the transmission now coming. Jason extended it up. So that's the breather for that transmission so it won't get uh, water in it. I got in and I did a bit of checking. And I opened up the glove box and pulled this tray down. You can see here there's the factory 185 surf body plug so the engine loom would normally plug into that and they've tapped in the back of it now the silly thing is that plug is actually on the UCF 20 wiring loom if that is a UCF 20 here it's got to be doesn't it it's not a crown one no that's definitely a UCF 20 ECU that's the factory surf ECU plug. I'm going to put that back in, up. And I don't. I don't really want to see it. I was searching for the four-wheel drive engagement wires, and I knew there was the, the plug here. This is the plug that normally plugs into the the gear knob. This bit here is actually that's your um, that's the speedo, and that speedo would normally be in here as well. And the four-wheel drive engagement is there's a couple of big wires in there as well. So the 185 surfs or the Gen 3 surf have a different four-wheel drive engagement computer and slightly different engagement motor. They've got a four-wire sweeper on a lot of them. Uh, and the four-wheel drive engagement, instead of being in the center consoles, in the passenger side, in this case, left-hand side kick panel. So I went searching, and there's the plug for it. So we've got four-wheel drive motor wires there, and they travel through the loom up to that big body plug in there. So I've, what I've done is I've tapped in the factory four-wheel drive light. Easy to find, just use a test light, probe it, and the power in the earth. I've made an extension loom. Coming over to the four-wheel drive computer, which I'm going to mount in the middle there in front of the gear stick. And I've plugged in my four-wheel drive engagement motor. And there's my gearbox loom. Put a grommet so it can go through the floor and be sealed up. I've reverted back to the factory plugs. So when we got this engagement motor, it had the wires cut off. Uh, I pulled it apart, had a bit of a look inside, and it is a absolute sweetheart. If it was at all dirty in there, I wouldn't have bothered repairing it. 
but because it was such a clean one, such a good one, um, I thought it was well worth taking the time to repair it, and I put back to the factory plugs. So that makes a big, big difference, makes it much easier to work with. And if it ever needs to be replaced, it's all factory stuff, all the factory plugs fit. So with it plugged in, I can now hit this button here. And the engagement motor works. That's out of four wheel drive. If I bridge the switch on the transfer case manually, it'll be this plug here, and it works. And the four wheel drive light comes on if I it's normally activated by the shaft. But I can do it with my finger. Awesome. Whoop, whoop, whoop. So that unit's now ready to fit, and my loom's ready to fit. I had a bit of a look at the gear stick. I did I found a seat for the top where the shifter fits in. Um, and you'll see it's still a little floppy. That's because it's missing a bush on the bottom of the stick. Hate it when your stick's missing a bush. Oh, and a, and a boot. So I've got both of those coming. We will see if we can find a better knob. I don't have any other knobs, I don't think, but that's the one I got with this transfer case. It does look like a, a dog's had a bit of a chew. I actually, I do enough of these that I have a spear test transfer case. Uh, this one was off a manual. And there is our gear knob with the little bush on the bottom of or the transfer knob. See the shifter is actually straight. There are some different designs, um, depending which model. I'm going to put that transfer motor on, recheck it, and then we're looking pretty good to driving this one out of the workshop. Jace has done a great job on it. So the big thing when you're putting these motors back on as you check that gear is in the right place so you've got it can be in four wheel drive like it is now yep see in oh, it's in this one can't turn um, in four wheel drive and the motor is in four wheel drive as well if you put it in the gear in the box the transfer case is in two wheel drive but the motor's in the four wheel drive position you will have problems let me just pop it back together Beauty. Wiring comes down. That's our fantastic drive shaft. It's been sitting outside. Tom's going to cut it up and rebuild it. Jace put in um, some scrap steel and just quickly buzz something together so that the box won't fall out. Right, we're ready to make it go and test it. Open headers. Probably put that out, put that bolt out, shall we? Yep. And that one. Of course, when we did this, we put a new bearing in the transfer case uh, adapter. It's like the back gearbox bearing. And I also changed this bush, to, which goes up in here. And that reduced about half of the motion in here with a wiggly. Half the wiggly is gone, make it much nicer. neutral the box is still turning okay so like no, 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 no. yeah, I, yeah. I, my brake doesn't work 
Okay. Because the, the, um, no, the drive shaft's up, but it's in neutral in the transfer case. Uh, yes. Yeah. So I can't stop the, the box. Yeah. So, shh, I have to stop the box, put it in there, into four wheel drive, and it goes in fine. But it's just because when I put it into neutral at present, the box can still turn. Turn, yep. So realistically, it needs to go into park before engaging four-wheel drive, four drive on the on the low four-wheel drive. So this low four-wheel drive should be in park. Um, I'm just going to start it and put a test load on it. I just want to probe into it. I want to prove that it's not wide right because it didn't start like it should. It should flare properly. Yes, turned off. Yeah, it turns off with the key. So that should actually stay on for three or four seconds. And that's why it's ugly to start. So it turns off at the key, where well it should turn off and stay, stay running for a few minutes, correct? A few seconds. Yeah the, yeah, the ECU should stay on for a few seconds. Yeah. The engine should turn off. But the ECU should stay on. Correct. Okay. Not bad for a farmer. So you've got issues with the... Yeah, yeah. Well, I definitely got a problem there. Okay. He suggested we might do what we did to the Zephyr and put a Haltech in it. Okay. Programmed, programmable ECU for motor and transmission. And that'll sort that problem out. Sort, that problem out. sort all those problems out. And then we'll give him like a four wheel drive so we can actually have it so he, he could hold it um, in different positions and do exactly what it should. He's putting a lot of work into an old truck. Yeah, but it's gonna be cool. You know, Diff's, it's what he wants to build. So yeah. it's gonna be really cool. Right, thank you. Right, I'm ready to drive it out, I think. There you go. I'll put it on the ground.